Welcome to a new episode of the Kick Out Podcast. Rest in your weekend was crazy. And we're going to get into some of that today. I've got my special... Well, before I get to my special guest, let's go into my co-host. We've got my co-host here. What's we're up? We're in zone, Mex, and also Kick Out and Rest Things. Mex, how are you? I, I belong to too many entities. You are, you are. I, you're I, love, a busy just, man. I love talking about wrestling, man. What can I do? Um, yeah, what? man, I'm, I'm doing very well, man. How about yourself? Well, uh, yeah, good, man. Like you just said, you love talking about wrestling. We love the passion. And, and I actually appreciate you coming here because... I swear you landed in the UK from from Philly um, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, landed, Monday night? Yeah, landed on Tuesday, Tuesday and um, literally went and saw my parents because yep. they were asking me, oh, like all of this stuff. My my parents have TikTok, which is very crazy in this day and age, <laughs> but they've been seeing a lot of stuff. Good, they've been seeing, so, they're um, the boy. They're seeing all yeah. the stuff that you're putting up. You're working very hard. I've always said that you're the hardest man, hardest working man in, in podcast business, trying, regardless man. what genre of podcast. And um, I also appreciate you being here because you just came back from GP Towers. You were just, you were doing the episode <laughs> I was just of doing GP. Really position. You drove down here to see us today. So and I'm going wrestling afterwards. <laughs> right. So, see, this is yeah. what I mean. This is my brother Max, man. But listen, we're going to talk about your WrestleMania journey on this episode. But let's let's introduce our special guest. He's a sports journalist. He's a wrestling enthusiast. He is Dell. Dell, thank you for joining us, man. Thank you so much, guys. It's a pleasure to be on. Obviously, Skillet, we've known each other for quite a while now. Yeah. We've met through the wrestling game. Yeah. But um, excited to talk all things WrestleMania, man. I felt like I met you through the journalism first. Yeah. Before, before any... Um, it was Money in the Bank. I met you at Money in the Bank last year when they were in the UK. You yep. were doing press with us. Yeah. And we got like a house on fire. Yeah. You know, literally, you know. I think it was about 30 seconds and we were literally by the ring taking photos and yeah, stuff. Man. That's it was, right. It was wild, crack man. job. Yeah. Um, we just, we just got on really well and then it was, it was good to see you at Gorilla Positions WrestleMania yeah. watch along party the <laughs> yeah. year uh, a couple of months afterwards yeah. and you won a lot of prizes and yeah. we, got, we got that's, I think that's when it cemented the friendship yeah really, man from definitely there. I think it for me it's when you meet like minded people you just automatically click yeah, and man. I think when that happens it's, and you're a wrestling enthusiast yes, man. boy magic's gonna happen <laughs> for real so thank you both for coming today man yes we got a lot to talk about I mean we haven't done a kick out episode for a little while so Let's unpack WrestleMania weekend first and before we talk about anything else. Uh, Max, you were at Philadelphia. You were doing some press. Well, you were doing press. You were doing stuff yeah. with wrestling as well. Mm -hmm. And you got to see arguably one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time. Um, how was that for you? Compare. Let's let's go back to last year. You were at LA last year for 39. 39 yeah. How does it compare to 40? I think, well, on one aspect, 39, I went as completely as a fan yeah. that was just, you know, looking to enjoy the show. I was so sure we we're going to see The Rock at 39, and that's why I decided to get <laughs> on the plane and, and go. LA, everything just added up, but clearly it didn't. Um, and then this time around was a bit more of the, the work stuff or, you know, what we like doing, content creating, podcasting, made some connections out there, yeah, um, filmed some content out there, um, went to some amazing places like the Suplex Vintage Store, which is the world's I largest. That, your socials. that looks You sick. would love that. <laughs> yeah. You would love that. Like, right. Honestly, I've, like I said, I'm not someone that's ever been into like merch and collecting mm -hmm. stuff and all that kind of bits. But right. even going in there, you just know like the energy is like a grail of all of this stuff, whether it's action figures, old school T-shirts, um, the wrestling belts. Upstairs, they had like basically ECW museum, which nothing is on sale. I think I heard you talk about it in the podcast. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It like we on rest things, we've got an actual dedicated video for yeah, our tour that. of that place coming so, out. So wait, so. so when you say ECW museum, is it like... Did you guys say it was on the first floor? Am I on wrong? the first floor, yeah. The first so the floor. shop so is the downstairs. In, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So the shop is the downstairs and upstairs is just everything basically ECW and nothing for sale. That's crazy. And they've got a Stone Cold Steve Austin um, like bar set up there. Oh, and uh, the ultimate dream for them is, you know, if they build the bar one day, yeah. Steve Austin is going to come and kind of grace it for them, innit? So, um, yeah, absolutely All incredible right, place. There, it's man. made me have an appreciation for merch and things of that nature, to yeah, be completely honest. I feel honest. like you and I, we're not really merch ilk like that mm. like we got a couple shirts <laughs> yeah but you, you you know the stuff true. that's the thing like true, for me true, like true. it's just like a figure and this yeah, and I that, hate and I, that. Hate, I know what you but mean I know yeah what you mean. like what when it's given context and everything that that was incredible um and then of course wale mania which yes. is the celebration of wrestling and hip-hop culture kind of meshed into one um loved all of the guys i saw there shelton benjamin was the the guest of honor so he yeah. was honored which was amazing um but nothing <laughs> beats for me there seeing beanie siegel and freeway they were there they were there like I didn't see that. <laughs> they were there did you put that on the thing yeah it's gonna be in the i think that okay. comes out might come out today or tomorrow they on wrestling channel up? 
I couldn't believe oh, it. <laughs> like, oh, and, and, right and that's it. I'm not. I'm not even like overly like everything. My younger brother puts me into a lot of music, yeah, because my brother's a producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Big up your brother, like, man. yeah, like just seeing that, and I, all I remember was all the old school films of them Dame Dash films and all of that stuff. Like, um, yeah, like I, I loved seeing them. And then of course um, I was invited to Progress, so yes. I went to Progress, which was just you know, great British representation in America yeah, and stuff. And they had a really good show. Um, Ring of Honor Ring of was Honor. good. Yeah. Um, and then we had obviously two nights of Mania and NXT as well. Amazing. So we're going to get into that. Done the whole thing. Monday went to WWE World, which is equivalent to the like access, which they used to do. This is on another level. Yeah. I never went to Access, admittedly, but this was, they took over a whole convention center and it was absolutely it looked, yeah, crazy. I, I do enjoy Access. The, the Access I've been to, I do enjoy, but I feel like some of it is kind of same old, same old. Mm. I feel like what you witnessed with WWE World is they Bro. actually actively thought about bringing in new things, introducing new things. Even yeah. the whole thing, like having Gorilla Position have their own podcast there. Yeah. And then you have Liv Morgan and Piper Nevin join you guys. We had, we had, we had, <laughs> we were at the 2K24 stand yeah. doing Gorilla Position. Next to us was Busted Open. So yeah. um, Dave, Mark Henry, Tommy Dreamer, um, Bubba Ray were all on that stage. Across from us was the Funko station. Amazing. Um, Kevin Owens was there signing Funko Pops. Behind us, they were shooting... Pat McAfee show. Yeah. John Cena was on there. You should have seen the stamp. He was actually there. I, I just thought he came on screen and they were talking to him remotely. He was actually behind me when we were shooting GP. That's when amazing. we finished GP, then Cody Rhodes came in. Another stampede over there. Like, um, so and you then were all, the bump, you like in the mix, yeah, bro. Yeah, then the bump to the right of us. And I think Liv Morgan was originally there with um, Sam Roberts and stuff. Like it was, it was that's really, brilliant. And yeah. I think that's, that is, that's testament to how successful these wrestling podcasts are getting mm. the content that people are creating how important it is yeah. th as a news outlet and it's good to see WWE embrace all different types of podcasts and that's great and I'm, I'm happy to hear that man that's yeah. good I'm glad you got to experience that yeah. man. this amazing. was done by I think Fanatics that do the merch and stuff now so like this was apparently the biggest ever that they've done so I saw yeah. a few videos online and compared to the convention centre that was next to um, Crypto.com Arena sorry yeah. I, know, I know it's changed names <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. got to big up the Lakers but <laughs> The levels it seems to have taken up, like, oh my God, it yeah. almost looks like you're walking into a wrestling arena. Yeah, I mean, the I think lights, every, obviously, literally. I wasn't there, man, but Max, for you, yeah, what, it was crazy. how did it compare to the ones at 39? And well, like I said, I've never, this was the first this one. First I've never one. been to Access yeah. or anything, so I didn't even have anything to compare it to. But I just thought the fact that people were paying whatever they were paying I think it was some of it was really quite pricey for this VIP was maybe about $60-70 yeah. um, but if you can get to watch live podcasts by all of these people buy your merch um, all the stages of course they had like um, the NXT what was that NXT thing that the cage, one of the cage things from NXT I think the IS Survivor Challenge they had like a model right. one they had the in the house set Yeah. they had yeah, the yeah, Firefly that. Fun House yeah, yeah, they had yeah, all of that God, like, it's just Oh, that's amazing, honestly, bro. And that's a show. You know what? When, when you see when you see them working with the likes of Logan Paul, getting KSI involved, getting Speed involved, like they are really embracing like how important internet content is. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's as big as TV now, literally, so, you know, if not bigger. I, yeah, I'd say, I was literally about to say. But I think it's a lot bigger. You've seen the success with all of these influencers getting involved, even down to the journalist side of things. Yeah, I think there's a crossover between being a journalist and a content creator and influencer now. Mm. You kind of. If you're a wrestling enthusiast, I think it's up to us to kind of keep pushing it because if they're going to keep creating this product that, that seems to just keep getting better and better, I think it's down to people like us to keep pushing it out there. Totally and agree. Totally agree. Um, we're going to circle back. Oh, so, oh yeah, hold on. In, in a nutshell, you're basically saying this experience is much better than last year. Yeah, I mean, I had more to do. <laughs> I had more to do. I was kind of more intentional with what of I was course, doing. You're, you're doing bits, so, you know what I mean? um, yeah, it was just different level. I mean, the weather wasn't great compared yeah, to, oh, to LA. Nice though, right? Yeah, LA oh, was right. So well, I need to ask you something important. What happened? In terms, I didn't of... really understand what happened at the airport. Why were you? Why? So when you were getting there, why were you? Why was there you trouble to even try and get in? In a nutshell, we were there on time. Yeah. Um, American Airlines closed the gate maybe about 10, 15 minutes earlier than the ticket said. They said they were going to close the gate at 12 so the plane can depart at 12.15. We got to the gate at 11.50. 
it was closed. They said they're not letting anyone else on the plane. We were well late. We weren't there by 11.25 when boarding began. We said, that's not how it works. That's not what a ticket says. Um, 100%. Yeah. I think the woman was probably thinking, ah, oh, these a bunch of lads just going on some holiday and she was quite harsh with us. As soon as we told her, we're going out there to make content. We've got people that we're meant to be filming with today. We opened bags and yeah. showed her cameras and, and yeah, stuff. And, and WrestleMania and all that. She yeah. chilled. She was a bit like, mm, okay, like I've maybe not done them a solid here. But, Everyone else that works for the airlines was very good okay, and then helped us. They tried to get us on a flight to Miami, put us on standby. Um, even Miami to, to Philadelphia would have still been long, but they, we couldn't get on that one. They tried to put us on a flight to LA, um, which would have been very long. We would have got to um, Philadelphia yeah, next morning at 6 a.m. I'll tell you about nothing. my experience in a minute. And then eventually one of them found a flight to, to New York, which is obviously kind of around the corner from Philadelphia. So we then got um, the flight to New York and then Uber and back down and all now they had already sent our bags to Philadelphia even though they had told yeah. us they had come off the plane 100% um, yeah oh so God. then we had to get a, a Uber from F New York JFK all the way down to Philadelphia's airport to get our bags it's weird they did that stuff similar to me I was it was the New Orleans one mm. we were in New Orleans and what's that WrestleMania 34 yeah. and um, when Ace and I shout out to DJ Ace we were checking in <laughs> They had the two seats allocated with my name on it and his name. And they were like, oh, yeah, we got these two seats for you. And then they were like, okay, we put our bags in. And then when it was time to go through, they let Ace in and they stopped me. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And they were like, oh, um, we've sold your ticket. We've sold your seat. Your seat's been sold. I was like, so what's, what's that? Well, how is that my issue? I already got told that we're good to check in. <laughs> my bags are through. I was furious. I was so angry. And then well, I, didn't, well, I didn't understand what the manager was doing. The airline manager came down. He didn't even argue. He's like, oh, he saw how angry I was and he saw my like he saw my point. Yeah. And he was just like, wrote me a check. I didn't get it. I just wrote me a check. And he was like, um, we found you another sorry, because sorry, Ace will have to go on about you, but there's a flight in an hour leaving to um New Orleans. Um, if you don't mind getting that, and here you go. And he gave me a check. I was just looking at it, I was still angry. I was like, <laughs> So what, I'm not going to get on <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't putting two things together. Yeah. I'm all tweeting as well. I'm all yeah. like, oh, forget American <laughs> Airlines. They screwed me over. Yeah. With my big check of like 400, 500 pounds in my hand. You... Yeah, they gave me 400 pounds check, bro. Like, Spending money, bro. I didn't even, exactly. Yeah. I didn't even pay for the flight. So it's like, but um, yeah, I, I'm glad that they sorted you out because that, that sounded like they were discriminating you. I don't want to be throwing, I don't want to. I, I, I don't know what they were doing, but it's just like, to be fair, when we told the rest of this woman's colleagues that it was this woman at the gate that stopped us, they were all like, oh, like, we've been here before sort of thing. <laughs> she does so, it. yeah, maybe this is a thing with her more so than who it is. Crazy. But... People like that, though, man, it's just like, you're, you're, you're not going to have, like, a party holiday. You're literally there going to create content. And, 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 and like, like I said, I think they're having a party holiday. Yeah, like, so you, what? you don't yeah. know them. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. And she's made an assumption. Yeah, and 100%. Like, like, but that's what, I, think that's, I think that's what she thought. Like, we had maybe been rushing to the airport altogether. By the time they looked into it, they saw that we had checked in from 10 a.m. for our flight at 12. Yeah, so we were there. We, but, you know, and like I said, she. I think once she found out that we were content creating, she, she, you could definitely see the guilt across her <laughs> face. But like she said, it's too late. But when they closed the aircraft door, that's it. Like, no. so... That's their protocol, but we got well, I'm there. I'm sorry in the you end. went through that, man. I'm glad you got through it. And look, look at the experience that you had, bro. Yeah, These, yeah. Know, I can't like, complain. They can't, they can't take a good man down. That's what <laughs> can't no, I didn't them. ask you about because usually when we get guests in for the first time, we yeah. always ask them about their wrestling experiences, their history. Yeah, but I've never asked you. So, what got you into wrestling? And if you can mention some of your favorite wrestlers growing up, and who's your Mount Rushmore? Um, I actually got into wrestling at a really young age, and it was because of my mum, man. Really? My mom, my mom used to watch. Mom, she shout out to mom's here. Yeah, but she used to watch a lot of the old British wrestlers on TV. It would literally just be on like, like main TV, like, yeah, yeah. like that giant haystack. Yeah, and... like the big. Um, and she used to say to me that they're literally. She was like, "What I see now." She was like, "I used to see them fighting in bingo halls. Like yeah. it was, it was an actual thing." And that got passed down, and then I started getting into it with like, I would say, when I cemented it for me was the TLC match. At Mania, that is what so, that is what cemented it for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the best matches. Yeah, ever. bro. One of the one. Best, best, one of the best. Well, I, I would ever. actually yeah. say that's what I think it, it pioneered a whole different yeah, era. It changed wrestling. Yeah. Um, and bro, Jeff Hardy was growing up was my guy in it. I nearly okay. broke. I I said it on um, 
the Mega Powers podcast, I nearly Shout broke, bro- <laughs> nearly broke my neck um, doing some Jeffrey. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, bro. <laughs> my mom come in. She was like, uh, "You ain't never gonna be a wrestler." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my Mount Rushmore man, my number one's Eddie Guerrero. Come on, I hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just for me, like one of the greatest of all. He, I, d- I think there was a bit of a period where there was a disconnect between fans and the wrestlers, and I think he was way ahead of his time where he understood getting that emotional aspect from people mm. and i think that's why for me you can i my mount rushmore changes all the time one name stays eddie guerrero yeah, man. i love that okay uh, but you don't have a you don't have another three because mount rush is four names isn't it <sighs> who's your three right now yeah my three right now i've got to put roman in there yeah i, I would actually it. i hear that I, I, do you know what i, I hear that i, want to I think it was at the summer sam watch party me and mike we were speaking and he goes if this was a tv show people would be going wild. Mm. People would be like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Mm. And it was, and, and that's why, and I, after watching the documentary the other day, that was it, that was it for me, mm. cemented it. Because it, was, it wasn't just what he's done for himself, it's for the people around him. Yeah. It's, and it was the same with Eddie Guerrero. These people aren't afraid to put people over. They have built storylines with people who need, that like, might have necessarily, people might say would have needed a boost weren't at the best time in their careers and they've come out the other side I think the entire product and I would say the entire roster now looks better because of people like Roman Reigns I'd put The Rock on there yeah. just... I mean he's great <laughs> the, the final boss yeah, yeah. yeah. Final, final boss the final, the final boss. boss in the flare trousers Mama yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on yeah but Mama, it's it's like, just, I don't think I've ever seen a more natural superstar in wrestling yeah. ever like yeah. the, like like all of us grew up watching The Rock, so yeah. it's like no surprise to see how great he is. I mean, you saw him live this time. <laughs> mm. and it's like you must have been like, still, even though you watched him as a kid, you probably still you probably still was in awe when you saw him come out. Do you know what you saw it in the crowd though? I think a lot of people Bro, you saw they were just one hundred percent. Like this, I don't think there will ever be a wrestler. That could do what he did. No. He's just magnet he's just magnetized. He's like he's magnetism, bro. It's yeah, like magneto, bro. You're just attracted to him. My and, number and four, four. I would actually go. It, it, it usually changes me between Randy Orton and Steve Austin. And the reason oh, that I put Randy Orton in there is I respect his longevity. Yeah, Orton's like Orton sick. And to see how he's bounced back from all of the bad press that he had at the beginning and it was his attitude and he weren't really doing well, he's things. He's worked that, on himself, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he's I think when people do that, you have to appreciate it, man. Well, that's yeah. why it's important not to jump the gun and try and get people cancelled all the time. Yeah. Like Some people, I'm not saying that we justify any nonsense. Yeah. Always call it out and you know hold people accountable. But to outright just try and ruin people's careers when they are, especially when they're young, yeah, like yeah. they're learning and they don't know any better. Like people need to have third, fourth, fifth chances, in my opinion, to, to become a better person. And, and I think that's what people do. So we, we, if you look at it from like, well, some people, do. football, for example, when these players are young, they get exposed to yeah, fame, money. WWE is a different level, man. It's international fame. You yeah. go on, if you, as soon as someone debuts on NXT, their life changes. Bro, you're on the road all the time. That's true. You're not getting much sleep, let's be honest. Yeah. You're young, you're ignorant. Yeah. I, I, I can only imagine how, if I was given the money they were making at, at, at <laughs> 19, 19, 20. 18, yeah. I'd be an idiot, bro. Yeah. I'd be a proper. But it's true, like, even, you know, Adele says um, NXT. That's a very good, like, humble example. That's right. Even that, we could kind of relate that to, you know, just having a part time job yeah. at any retail store. That's and right. all of a sudden, you get your, your first job out of uni. That's right. And you're not just kind of going up and turning up and earning a, a quick wage, which some of them do are working for like $30, $40. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you've got a salary. Yeah. Like you've planned the for money. For your dream every, as well. Yeah, for <laughs> your dream job. Every month X is coming in. You yeah. see what I mean? So, yeah, I think um, there definitely needs to be more of like a rehabilitation process for agree, some of these um, youngsters. I agree. No matter I, the sport, he's, football's a great one mm. uh, example as well. And, you know, bigger, I know WWE do, do actively try that with some of these mm. stars. I guess some of the people they really get on with, I'm not going to mention names. I guess you guys could kind of figure out what I'm talking about. <laughs> but like Triple H and Hunter's got like a love for a certain wrestler and they're trying to do things with him, which is admirable. But I guess some wrestlers can't really come back from what they did, but some wrestlers can. And it's, I just feel like it's, it's good to always give people, have that door a little mm. pry open. Just yeah, to, yeah. You, know. you don't give people the opportunity to grow. And exactly. I think that's the biggest thing with that is that you, a lot of these guys that we are now thinking of as veterans, legends, are the people we grew up watching. Cena wasn't the greatest guy when he debuted mm. and he's been open and said that. Mm. And I I think Logan Paul is a great example of how you can tell he's just loving it, man. Yeah. And the way he's taken to wrestling, I think 
we'll look back on it in 10 years and be like, I don't think you'll ever get someone take to wrestling the way he did. Yeah. He understood it. And I watched the Impulsive podcast where he's speaking about how much creativity that Triple H gives everyone now. He's yeah. like, I want you to be involved. Yeah. And like, even down to the finer details of that, the markers. And I think when you give people creative freedom, the opportunity to grow, I think that's when magic happens. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about WrestleMania, Max. All right, so night... Let's talk about WrestleMania for both of you. Yeah. Um, night one, um, what was your thoughts, Max? You were there live. You said that the weather wasn't great, obviously. And I've, obviously, there was an excitement in the area. You know, the Rock was in coming in the main event. And, you know, there was still an excited crowd. But did you feel the weather took away some of the excitement for, for the audience? Not at the time. When I... Got home, obviously went to bed, whatever. Next morning, I'm kind of reading and catching up with everyone's tweets and stuff like that. Um, and just everyone out back home seems to be just cuss cussing the live crowd and just like, oh, the crowd was crap and all of that kind of stuff. I was thinking, what? Like, it was lively when I was yeah, there sort I, of I thing. Like, I would say it's harsh to say that. I don't think they were crap. I no. I don't think they were crap. I, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was cold. Yeah. Like, I was wearing two trousers. I was wearing a hoodie. I was wearing a, a jacket. I was wearing a hat, a woolly hat. Like, I was well-dressed <laughs> sort of thing because it was blitz. And, skiing pretty much. <laughs> and people that in the, pre the press box were yeah. literally behind the windows. They they didn't open the press and let them kind of take right. in the atmosphere because it was so cold. So, um, but yeah, it was, I felt generally the show was good. Um, my disappointment was really in Jay and Jimmy. Mm. Um, yes, we're going to get to that. I was just very disappointed with what they'd done there. But then experiencing the second night, I said, no, when, now that it's a bit warmer and obviously the second night was probably a bit shorter, mm. um, they had one less match on the card. I said, no, like now I can understand the difference, at least in atmosphere of the two nights. Second night was definitely more like round. Well, let's talk about night one then. So it, it kicked off with the women's championship, uh, Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley for the women's championship. Del, what did you think of this match? Bro, I... I'll be honest, I think I was saying this at uni, so that would have been six years ago when I had hair. Um, <laughs> and I was saying, I was like, there's just something that this girl has, this Rhea, woman. Rhea, and I, at the time, I think she was 21 at the time, and mm. she was young. And she, because she, she left home at a young age to pursue her dreams. Yeah, yeah, she did. And now it's come full circle, man. And I think, I think she's probably one of the most important people on the roster now. Period. Yeah, she's a star. It's, it's, it's interesting because I, I remember when I interviewed her in 2019 and she was so, sh she, like, she was still very shy. Yeah. Like, she was already up and coming because yeah. I think at that time, Tony Storm was the NXT Women's Champion yeah. and Rhea was becoming her rival. So uh, she had probably just come to the country like a year yeah. before that, Max. We had a nice conversation. She was in the UK first. She, yeah, she, yeah. Did she was in, she was in yeah. UK, yeah, 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 NXT UK first. And then we had a nice chat about, you know, her love for rock and roll and mm. how she used to do mosh pits and stuff mm. like that. But she was still, it was, you could tell she was very, like, I don't know. Was, I can't describe it. It was like she was very sweet and bubbly, but there was something there where she couldn't fully be herself. Just within herself. Yeah. Bit, yeah. And um, um, to see how she is now, she's a mega star. But didn't she, I heard, I heard a rumor she had an anxiety attack backstage. Is that true? On the day On of WrestleMania. You wouldn't never know that, if you know. see it, but apparently, because obviously, you know, Becky got yeah. sick. Becky's sick and she had... Um, On WrestleMania Yeah, though. Becky was yeah. sick and she had... Strepsils, strep, uh, strep, strep strepsils, or strepsils, something. like what, what's it called? Strepsils? Yeah, yeah, strepsils. Well, you can't talk or something. Oh, uh, I don't know. Strepsils what it's or something like that. Something, oh, I can't remember. Okay. Something where it's like if you yeah. fucks up your throat, you can't really talk. Yeah, your throat's yeah. messed up. <laughs> so Becky had that, and apparently, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that Rhea Ripley had you a, you a panic attack backstage. But you would never see that when she came out. I was, do you know what? I was a bit, I, I don't want to say skeptical, but I was a bit skeptical. I, I was after the chain because I was like, is this really the way, like, because I'll be honest, I wanted either, I wanted Bianca in that spot or I wanted Jade in that spot at, to begin with. Against Rio. Yeah, yeah, against Rio. Okay. Um, I think they need to, I think, I think with both of those women, that needs to be a bit more of a build. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't, even, is, do, now, I wouldn't I even do it next now. year. Yeah. No. I, wouldn't, would, I would do maybe 42. I, I, think? I think, I think next year's Rio Bianca. Yeah. Think so? mm. well, I You're think probably next year's right. Rio Bianca and I think it would make sense to have Jade turn at Mania build from the year towards So, so Rio beats Bianca's WrestleMania streak. Oh, and then Ooh, Jade, you think she's going to win? That's, no, no. I, I don't, the way I'm saying it is, I think Jade's going to cost her streak and then she's going to face her. At yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. that's what you're saying. So, yeah. so Jade costs Bianca the streak and Rhea... Hold on. So Jade doesn't beat the streak. Jade is the reason why Rhea, um, Bianca loses the streak. Yeah. I think that's a good shout. Have them have friends for the whole year. Yeah. Because Jade... I want them to win the tag titles. Great, I like... I want them to do the whole great, thing. As yeah. great as Bianca is as a heel... 
Jade. I think bro, Jade, 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 Jade is the better heel. Even yeah, yeah, yeah. The, even down to like the little things, like her pin, bro. And I think it's so sim, something yeah, so yeah. simple. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah. it, imagine yeah, that no, as a you. heel, like that is it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everyone's gonna be like her doing that. She's yeah. pinning your favorite wrestler. Like one that's, that's one of the things she's brought over from AEW, which they haven't changed about her. Like yeah. she's still been doing. She that, still has so. the theme, really. They just kind yeah, of yeah, twerked, twerked it, it, it a bit. Yeah, yeah. But still the yeah, theme. Yeah. I love that theme. Yeah. Bro, it's on my gym playlist along with your new album as well, bro. Thank you, my brother. Love time and heritage. Get his new album out now. Cheap plug. Thank you, brother. Um, well, there's a question. All right. You probably, because you were there live, you probably couldn't see what we saw. I mean, you watched it back when mm. you got home. But the Becky's entrance. Yeah. What did you think of that? With the book, the book. stuff. I didn't mind at first, but I felt it took, it, it was just too long. I was like, yeah. why is this still going? Yeah. I mean, she's getting into that realm of those kind of triple H's kind yeah, of yeah. No, entrances now. Entrances. Like even last year, her yeah. entrance was that, like the Marvel comic and or something, if I remember. Um, I mean, she's promoting her book in it. I, I like, I didn't mind the touch of her gear had like paragraphs yeah, of I her like book yeah. on it, yeah, which I, I thought like was that. cool. But, yeah, I just I didn't think maybe the the CGI graphics necessarily worked well with the background. I think that was more my issue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, we had the. This was a really nice uh, touch by WWE. Big up the dude for this. The uh, ladder match, the six pack ladder match with um, Awesome Truth DIY. Uh, Judgment Priest, Day. Judgment Day. Priest and Bala. New Catch Republic. New Catch Republic. Who else was in there? The, um, all, uh, Theory and Waller. Yeah. F- Theory Eight and Town Waller. Down Under. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was just, it was just them, innit? The yeah. six pack. That was the six. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, how did you guys think about this match? I'm going to you first, Max. Well, the first half of the match in the stadium, the screen wasn't on. What? Yeah. So I don't know if this, the chance came across on TV and people so were asking I to fix like the screen and stuff. So random cheering and stuff like that throughout yeah, the match. So that's probably like, when the screen came on when you heard the sense. cheering. Um, but obviously Aww. for those watching in the ring and stuff like it, the action was good it, it was a car crash in a good way which it needed to be because that's the kind of match it was um, I was very happy that the separation of the titles made sense yes, like yeah. it was done done in a clean, yeah. a clean way because when I thought they were going to do this I thought mm, this is going to be a bit of a mess but it, it's better than you know two GMs coming out and then just separating the titles for no reason yeah. so yeah, I don't like when they. I can't, who is when they swap their titles over? Yeah, I hate when they do that. I hate when they do that. Fight me first, bro. Yeah, exactly, one hundred percent. So yeah, 100%. I'm happy they found a way to kind of do this. I was surprised that even though the um, like Waller and Theory grabbed the SmackDown titles. I thought they would grab the titles and leave. Yeah, they were allowed to stay and yeah, still fight for the Raw. Yeah. That's, yeah. like, that, that's pretty enough. cool. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it kind of cemented it for everyone when when the camera panned to the ring, and the titles were separated on. T- by it quite some distance. distance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, They weren't near each other. Like it would yeah. be very hard to grab both sets of titles. Yeah. And I was just happy that Truth got his main yeah, man. man. Fifty two like, years yeah. old, mm. a, a legend, a veteran. Like he's been grinding away. Doesn't complain. Is that his only title he's won at WWE? No, he's US champ before. Oh, he yeah, was US, US champ before. before. You're right. Um, but yeah, that's and his he's been first in WWE title win. match. He was in for IC champ, was he? No. no. So he was US champ before. Twenty four okay, so seven. So he has, you're right. Oh yeah, he's twenty four seven. So he has won titles before, but. It was nice that he got that touch, especially with Awesome Truth, because when they were red hot, when they first formed, that was cut short. Yeah. Yeah. So to give them that, you know, that it come full circle. And it's mm. good. And that is, and now Miz is kind of propping our truth this time. Our truth kind of like the, is kind of the star of the group yeah, now. Yeah. So. Big up our truth. He's very loved. And it's, it's good to see him get um, to get the title. This next match, I felt was a good match, but I was the ending for me. I want to ask you how it, how it felt, oh what the hell goodness. you thought was going on when you first saw this. The Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus um, Santos and Dominic Mysterio. I mean, it, it, everything else was put, it was booked really well. The, the, the action was great. The back and forth, the both factions going at each other. They even like didn't even do the Carlito turn because they knew that was going to be obvious. So they probably scrapped that. That mm. probably wasn't the works, so but they scrapped that. I was actually, I was like, I was convinced it was happening. Yeah, going to happen. <laughs> but I it's think they were happen. like, yeah. Mm. So they instead they did a different ending when they had two NFL stars a pair in Rey Mysterio masks. I was like, what's going on? Because these guys look like, I thought they were like a new members of the Wyatt family, bro. Bro, they look <laughs> they jacked. Were wet, bro. Yeah. jacked. <laughs> and I just thought, I, and I tweeted, I remember I tweeted when it happened, I was like, oh, that's not a good ending. And then an American uh, follower uh, commented on me and he's like, well, you don't understand. It's like Jack Grealish showing up at a wrestling event. Like, I'm, I don't want to see Jack Grealish at a wrestling event. <laughs> What do you mean, bro? I want to see him play football. Yeah, exactly. I want to see him cut him from about. the left wing, bro. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently one of the NFL stars is the brother of that 
NFL star that's yeah. So they, the Eagles yeah. were in the finals uh, right. of the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, the crowd did pop. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, the crowd they went, did pop. But I, crazy. I didn't realize how big like the eat like they love. The right. Eagles, bro. Mm. They like they are like god level to them right. out in Philly. So that's probably why. They did yeah, it. man. That's why they did it, and they looked like they had fun. But I just felt like it was just. I mean, the match was thrown together anyway. Yeah. It's just I at least give Dominic his lick back, man. Yeah, that, and that was probably more annoying for me because I was like, well, this match has been thrown together. I don't want to see this, but at least Dominic is gonna get a win here. And then they brought it out and they bring out these two massive guys in Lucha Dormas <laughs> and I'm racking my brain for the next 20 seconds. Like, yeah. who could this be? Is that Gallows oh, and yeah. Anderson? You know yeah. I mean? oh, it you know can't what I mean? be too big. You know like, who's mean? this out? I'm asking my cousin that's next to me about, he was throwing some names out. We just couldn't work it out. And they took off the mask and we're looking on the tron and we're like, who the hell's that? Who the hell is that guy? Exactly, bro. <laughs> and then the guy next to us is like, oh my God, that's Eagles, superstar, da -da 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 -da, something, something, Kelch. And we're like, Okay. Cool story, bro. Yeah. Like, and like, at least give Dominic his win and then the whole, the faction could have jumped. Let them come yeah. do a beat or something. And yeah. then they could have come and saved the day. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. don't like, not let Dominic win, man. I, I just thought that was ridiculous. I, mate, Dominic Mysterio, yeah. He's going to go so far. He's oh, brilliant. Game, bro. He is brilliant. He gets the game now. And I yeah. think he had people like Edge to learn from. His dad's very Mysterio. Yeah. Is but it. I just Eddie, think, even Eddie, he's learning Yeah, Eddie. man. Do you know what I mean? And he's been around the game for so long, but... I think he was always going to have that sort of caveat over him of Rey Mysterio's son, and he. I think he. I think he's at. He, he shed that skin now. He's his own I entity. Agree. This is I like. I'm, for me personally, I'm always the person that will say I'm here for nepotism, because if we were all in positions to bring through our kids or whatever the case yeah, is, we would I'll do, do it. it. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm here for nepotism, yeah. but you have to stay here when you when I bring you here. You've 100%. got to work, you know, and yeah. get and, and be realistic the with the nepotism. Like, 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 if you know that your your son or daughter is not doing good. Work them harder, like yeah. work them hard, but bring them in because they yeah. his talent is working. It's like, like the next generation he, are killing it. He's I mean? he's turned it around and he's had the help and support of some great wrestlers along the way. I mean, his first match was against Seth Rollins. Yeah. Like great wrestlers along the way. Even what we're seeing now with Ava in NXT, like they can clearly see, well, she's a daughter of the rock. Maybe this wrestling thing's not she's so much for better, her though. right now. As a GM, yeah, she's, she's great. She's really yeah. doing good. As she's yeah. a GM, she's yeah. come along so far. Yeah. So I think she's gonna face Roxanne down the line. I think her and Rock, not for, it might not be for the top, but I think it would be nice because they always clash. You yeah, see them once he yeah, always yeah, clashing, yeah. and I think, I think for her to come back into an in ring role, I mm. think it has to be in a way where she's facing one of the NXT. Superstars. It's got to be big, yeah, yeah. I was quite upset with how her, sort of her in ring career like kind of just got pushed to the side so mm. quickly, and obviously but the, she's probably still working on it. Yeah, and I felt yeah. like Mex is right. Like they did the right thing with making her GM. Yeah. Her father's the Rock. So she, she she's grown up with the, with the one of the most charismatic men <laughs> in the planet. So she's got that in her. If you guys remember when Stephanie first started, yeah. when she first showed up in Armageddon '99 with the steel chair, and <laughs> well, that's not when she first showed up because she was doing a lot of stuff with the Ministry of Darkness. But remember when she first turned heel? I mean, when she first turned heel and she joined forces with Triple H and she hit her dad with the chair, she wasn't the best talker. Like no. she wasn't. Like she needed a lot of work. And you see how. She is now. She's yeah. like she became into her character. She became great. So I could see that a lot of that with being the rock star rock just means that she's not afforded to learn on TV. That's right. Because mm -hmm. it does, they don't want her to look bad. That's right. Uh, anyone else, they'll they'll just make them learn on TV. That's that's true. Um, that's just good so point. yeah, she just has to keep plucking away behind the scenes and then maybe return at it one day. All right, next match. I think everybody knows we all in agreement. This this was a bit of a letdown. People were looking forward to this match. When this match is the most. This was the brother versus brother match. They talk about, you know, we have a classic brother versus brother match. Owen and Brett in the past, which for me, is still the best brother versus brother match in WrestleMania yeah. history. Um, you had um, the Hardys, which was a good match. This, unfortunately, was a bit of a letdown. I, what do you think went wrong, Max? Because it, just, it, it, just, it was a super kick party. It was very much... I don't know. That, I, think, I think that's exactly it. Like, there was, there was no match, there was no story really to be told. And I realised this back in January when Jey Uso came out first for the Rumble and then Jimmy came out second and we got that moment and the massive pop and Jay selling it so well and they faced, went face to face. I thought, this is what I wanted. I don't want to see these two wrestle. And then they never followed through in the Rumble. Yeah. And then we get this match, which they just based it off all the bloodline stuff. Obviously, Jimmy tried, Jimmy costed Jay on a couple of occasions trying to win singles titles. They put together a great vignette showing them wrestling in their living room, which of course they're going to have footage of yeah. because they're the users and their dad is Rikishi and everything like that. Like, but the match, there was no substance. There was just nothing. They never had enough 
sorry, they had enough time to go and, you know, tell some type of story. Super kicks just all over the place. Then Jay believes for whatever reason on the WrestleMania stage, Jimmy's apologizing to him after all of this time. He buys into that. Like, I just yeah. felt like going into this, I knew this was going to be a like a bad match. Yeah. But I was very much like, I'm very happy for them to get this moment. Um, however, like, surprise me. Because I, I'd have no expectations. Yeah. And this was just very, It was a letdown, cool. wasn't it, Dale? Oh, man, you know how big. I know. Jay, you love I'm yeah, one of Joe's like... biggest fans. And I'll, I will always, like, say that I think he should get a single title run. Just oh, yeah, because, of of, like, the work that him and Roman were putting in in lockdown was crazy. Yeah. But... For me, it was a letdown. I think the better moment actually happened in the main event of night <laughs> scrap night. Yeah. yeah, like that's that is what I wanted on night one. I don't want a super kick party as great as it was, but super kick parties for the other company. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, 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 but Usos, I have to admit, Usos are guilty of that. A lot of people do criticize Young Bucks for that. Yeah, Usos. They're as bad as Young Bucks when it comes to the super kick stuff. I think man. they're worse. To be yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I but, didn't want to say that, but I think Max is right. I think they are worse than Young Bucks. The, the when thing it comes to the super kick stuff, yeah. they, they, they do it. It's, it's too much. And I'm, I'm going to be honestly. I'm, I was. I watched WrestleMania at my brother's. Yeah. Um, shout out to him, boss. <laughs> and he had his friends. He had his friends round, and we played a game, bro. I'm not. I'm not even lying to you guys. <laughs> we played. The super kick, kick count off. Yeah. Oh, we did the same in the group It was chat. 19. <laughs> it was 19 super kicks, bro. I went, I said, I was like, plus 25. But it was Who's 19, out, bro. Yeah? And when it got to like 18, <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro. hold on. And, and it was like, there was no, there was nothing. Max is right. There was nothing to it. I don't know if one of them got hurt. I don't know. I know they botched, Jimmy botched the Samoan drop on Jay. Yeah, that didn't look great. But it just didn't, I just don't. I don't think I don't they ever think really got going. I, I think don't think they the had problem. a plan. It's just like, we're just going to go out there and do whatever. We're brothers. That's, that's, that was their plan. Yeah. <laughs> we're brothers. The story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They so, thought that was going to carry them. That was the chemistry. So to rank that match, we're going to give it a no yeet. No yeet. No yeet. No yeet. All right. None. No Zero. yeet. Um, all right, cool. Let's Destiny's Child, Jay Cargill, Bianca <laughs> Belair, <laughs> and Naomi <laughs> debuts to get damage control. This was what it is what it was. We knew it was going to be a showcase. It wasn't really going to be a great, great match like that. Um, but the entrance was amazing. 10 out of 10. They look great together. Mm. It builds Naomi up, which I, will, I love to see because for me, Naomi is one of the most underrated wrestlers in WWE till this day. Like, people love her, people enjoy her, but I don't think people give her the respect as an in-ring She hasn't really wrestler. got her flowers yet, has she? No, no, I don't think she has. And Even I feel, by going to Impact and coming back, I think she's one of yeah, the most underrated Impact, people. Yeah, she's been bits yeah, in Impact. Yeah. I saw the matches that she had there, she was killing it. So mm. it's good to see her getting lifted with Jade and um, Bianca. Big up Carrie Say, big up Asuka, big up uh, Dakota Kai. They, they did their bit, they did their thing. But it was just nice to showcase Bianca being dominant and obviously Jade getting the... Jade got the pin, right? Am I making yeah. up? Yeah. Jade and Jade, Jade looked great. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes on. I'm, I'm not going to ask you guys your opinion on this. We, we all know it's... it's uh, you know. I think it done what it needed to yeah, do. Yeah, that's like, right. That's it takes it. Takes all, takes no, all the it's boxes. Nothing, but I will ask your opinion on this next <laughs> match. Dale, you go first. Did you think Sami Zayn was going to be the one? Not until I saw the vignette at the like the the, um, the press conference, the, the kickoff show. Yeah, I didn't see that. You, you didn't, didn't see, see that it? until I saw that, and he was walking with his little kid, man. And I was like, "You ain't getting this guy to send so videos of his son." You didn't see the backstage stuff with him in the. No, I saw the backstage you saw stuff. That, You're yeah. talking about the, when was, the like the vin like the video package that they basically put together before Sammy. Um, Came out. Say, yeah. Oh, okay. No, no. I thought you were talking about. You know, they done the little like pep rally looking thing, um, the kickoff preview or something yeah, yeah, like that's, that. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Oh. I didn't see that. So I, Sammy came out and flamed Gunter on the mic. I, oh, I didn't, I've I didn't never see that. seen. I haven't seen. I'm it. gonna be real. I've always appreciated Sammy Zayn on the mic, but it was always I didn't believe what he was saying sometimes because yeah. he comes across as such a nice guy. Yeah. Right. When he picked that mic up, I was. Him. Cooked. In awe, bro. Gas, really? gas mark I six. I didn't see that. Bro, un gas unbelievable. Absolutely, I couldn't believe it, bro. All right, I need to watch this. I didn't bro, see that. Unbelievable. I missed that completely. And the, but the thing is, I think after that, I was like, that's I annoying. want it to be Sammy, man. I want it but to be Sammy. That's annoying for me. Because that kind of, to that, that, if I saw that, I probably would have been into the match a bit more, bro. So, yeah. so that for me, yeah, I won't lie. I, I If I would have seen that, I, I still thought Sammy looked like the dog's bollocks in that, but I yeah. still would have probably said Gunter was going to win. Yeah. But I would have definitely said, like, Sammy earned some percentage, like, he's not so clear, clear cut. 
I didn't see Sami Zayn walking out as champion, no way, shape or form. I thought the entrance was excellent with his wife and his kid and then yeah. meeting um, Chad Gable along the way, then yeah. meeting Kevin Owens along the way. I thought that was class. But I just didn't ever see Sami Zayn beating Gunter. I just thought this was Sami Zayn's chance to have the match. And then later on, it'll be Chad Gable or someone. Um, but the way it was done, the story that was told, like... You know what, right? Was great, I was... Man. When I initially watched it, I was a bit... I didn't want Gunther to lose the belt mm. yet. But hindsight, now being a few days later, it was the right decision. I think I think Gunther has to now go on to main event status. He's done his thing with the IC title. We can get another reign with Gunther as a world champion eventually. And also, it does, like, Sammy being the legend that he is and the Hall of Famer that he will be, it does add on to his legacy. Mm. And I think, you know, I, I personally wanted it to be Chad. Because I wanted to be somebody that's never won it before, yeah. somebody new. But it might be the right decision. In hindsight, I'm kind of swaying to maybe they did do the right decision. It's a long-term it storytelling. He never actually lost that title in the first place, did he? Yeah. So it's like come full circle. That's it, true. Yes. Yeah, from like, do you remember all the conspiracy theories? That's like yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And when he picked up the mic, the thing he said to Gunther, he was like, I main evented WrestleMania last year and yeah. I won. Mm. And yeah. I was like, what can you say to that? Yeah, 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Max, is you, you, good, you made a good point on Grilla Position when you said, look, they did the tag, they did the celebrity match a year before last year. Yeah. They did the tag team match with Usos last, in the main event last year. This year, he's won the IC. This could help Sammy lead on to a possible world title. It could he's delivered in every match as well. Yeah. I, yeah. None of those he's one of the best. None of those matches are poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the best. Even the Johnny Knoxville one, man. Shout out <laughs> to Kay now, who's the editor of the Kick Out podcast. He's my brother. Yeah. He... Doesn't really watch wrestling as much, but he did see back in when Sami Zayn was in Ring of Honor back in the day. Yeah. He saw it when he was um, El, Ger El Generico. Yeah. I, remember, I don't know if you remember this address, and you were like, you'll see the moves that he would do and the, the sliding through the, the ring post with the, yeah. like, the, the yeah, spinning yeah. The DDT. DDT. And he's like, this guy's the best wrestler I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't know if you remember that address, but do you remember that address? You probably don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was funny. Anyway, uh, let's let's talk about the main event of night one. We we'll have to rattle through night two as well, and then we get into some um, recent topics before we wrap up um, tonight. Um, the main event, yes, The Rock, Roman Reigns versus uh, Cody Rhodes, Mama Rhodes, and your boy Mama Rhodes. Mama Rhodes printed on a belt. Bro. Bro. I'm gonna make your boy bleed. Mama Rhodes. <laughs> make, him blow, make, him, make your boy bleed, Mama Rhodes. <laughs> is it the way the he was rock, chatting man. to his the mom? Rock oh, big he, guy, bro. Uh, this is different level, you know. Different level. <laughs> what a main event. Forty-five minutes, I believe. Incredible. Um, from start to end, I was in the edge of my seat. At the time, I was kind of like swaying between sleep. <laughs> Uh, at some of the entrances and stuff but I watched when this match came on I was fully awake um, What you were there live man what was what was the electricity like Max when, when The Rock came out when Reigns came out tell me man what, and even when Cody came out Bruv, it was it was different. Like people were very very excited, as you could imagine. For so this many main celebrities event. was there like, as well. Bare celebrities. So were many there. celebrities there, and there was you know they were there specifically for the Rock. You know, Honestly, what I mean? Not, like, no, 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 pain, no, shade on, yeah, no shade on, <laughs> no shade on WWE, but a lot of the celebrities there was, yeah, of course, was there for the Rock. Of course, um, even his his entrance was was brilliant. Final boss. No, the final boss activated or whatever it said. Crazy. Um, yeah, and then I think for me the best part of it was we got so much out of the Rock. Like, this isn't someone that just... Came, I mean, we saw Cena on Raw the other day. He joined the tag match, done his five moves of doom, and then that was it, done. <laughs> like, The Rock actually came and wrestled. He looked like he held up. He didn't look like he was tired or fatigued yeah. at any point. He went through a table. Yeah. Like, he actually came to do business. Yeah, he did. He did, he and, did his um, thing, man. Sold, sold the Cody Cutter like a G. Yeah, sold the Cody Cutter, the spear from Roman Sick. and everything yeah. like that. Um, I thought Roman was terrific, who was obviously doing the heavy lifting on that, on that side. Yeah. You know, probably the most he's wrestled in his whole three years of that feeder <laughs> yeah, champion. 100%. But um, yeah, like if you, if you don't, if you wrestle sparingly and then give us like a 44 minutes that like Roman did where he knew he had to carry the rock sort of thing, like it was, I think it was great. I think Seth Rollins, you know, we'll get on to tonight too, but that's personally my MVP of the whole weekend. Right. I think he's just so underappreciated. And Cody, again, telling his story and, you know, them getting all the, the shots well at the end when, you know, we finally got the people's elbow, Rock puts away Cody. The same kind of identical shot as we got at the end of 39 um, when Cody was sitting in the ring. 
Michael Cole selling it on commentary, like, you know, this is all, it's, it's done. How is he going to finish his story now? Mm -hmm. um, just as an entire spectacle, they, it went longer than I think anyone probably expected, um, but not to like the detriment. It was really good action. So yeah, it was, it was good stuff. Great main event, man. I, one... I loved it, man. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Like we were speaking about it earlier. I grew, we grew up on The Rock mm. and to see someone that had gone away to Hollywood, come back, wrestle the way he did. And I think most people wouldn't have been too shocked if we saw a couple of moves tagging now and then. So I expected. You know, I th I'll be uh, me as well, mate. And I think to come away yeah. from that on the set, you're like, bro, get me to that main event on Sunday. Oh my <laughs> <Yeah>. God. Like, <laughs> Actually, it yeah. delivered what it needed to do. Yeah, I think when you, as a fan, you're like sat home and you're like, surely Cody can't lose this. Mm. Surely Cody can't lose this. Because you're, I was at 39 and both the boos were wild. Oh the boot, like it was definite. Yeah. So I was like, no way they're going to yeah. do this again. Yeah. And I asked him, Money in the Bank, at the pre when we was at the um, press afterwards, I said to him, How do you feel like your momentum's recovered? And he said that Cody said that day, it's, it's, it's all about more. It's about the numbers, it's about the tickets, it's about the t shirts. They're smashing all these records and now he's got the belt. Mm -hmm. To come away from. I know we're not supposed to set the stardust to come go leave the business for him to come back and have moments like that with the rock was just beautiful for me. And yeah, I was just like every single part of that match delivered what it needed to do. And I, I do agree with Max. I think Seth Rollins, we're speaking about my Mount Rushmore. If there's any name that will make an appearance on there that isn't on this, it is Seth Rollins. That's phenomenal. Like yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's you know, it's 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 great how things work out in the world of wrestling, man. Like I remember when what wasn't it WrestleMania twenty nine when it was Rock Cena WrestleMania twenty nine, mm -hmm. and something I don't know I don't want to blame Rock and Cena for it, but something happened in that in that WrestleMania where things went over time, and they had to cut a eight man tag, which was which Cody was in, Cody really? was with Sandow, and he was with the Bella Twins, and they were supposed to go off against. Um, What's tons of funk? The Funkadactyls and yeah. um, <laughs> Funkadactyls and uh, what's the the guy Bro Brodus Clay? Okay, yeah, name? Brodus Clay. Brodus Clay and, and, yeah. and Naomi, um, Tyrus. I think he um, does Albert. Yeah. What was his Tenzai? Tenzai. Tenzai yeah? yeah. So that was supposed to happen, but I I don't know what happened with Ro something happened that mania that they had to cut that match completely. So and obviously when you always get a match cut in WrestleMania, it's always it's, it's upsetting, isn't it? Yeah. So to to come back all the way down now where Cody's facing up against The Rock. In the main event, it, it's it's really wonderful to see, and I, and and I, Cody deserves it, man. Like I've I've been a long time fan of Cody for such a for a long time. I knew how great he is because you could just tell he had it, always had it, and it just certain things hasn't always worked in terms of how he was booked. But when you the the quote the Macho Man Randy Savage, the cream always rises to the top. <laughs> oh yeah, so, you know what I mean. Big up Cody. Yeah, great, great, great night one. Um, very good. But night two for me, Max, I think was the better of the two nights. Would you agree? Yeah. Since they started doing these two night shows, I've never been the one to kind of jump so soon that this was night. Well, this night was better than this night, or yeah. whatever the case is. I always kind of just watch it back and take time and think about it. But yeah, night two felt very proper. Yeah. Like it almost felt like very definitive to everything we've been seeing on TV. A lot of storylines literally ended. Um, a lot of champions decided and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it was good. I mean, I think they had that. So it kicked off with Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins. The way this was booked was so brilliant. Yeah. Like Drew dominating Seth. Seth obviously had the match the night before. His knees messed up. His knee was messed up anyway going into that match in the first place. Drew is dominating him with so much Claymore kicks, Claymore, Claymore, Seth kicking out, Seth doing some of the curb stomps all over on the, t on the table, whatever. Anyway, Drew got the best of Seth, right? And, and how they did this, me being a long-time wrestling fan, even I was fooled. because well, I, I was fooled. I, I don't think anyone expected <laughs> I don't know if you were fooled, because you were there. I don't know if you were fooled. So, so I wouldn't be surprised if you wasn't fooled. No, nah, when so obviously he done, we saw him doing, he won the match. Yeah. Um, went to his missus and went stuff to his like missus. that. But even before he went to his missus, the, the emotional part when he's holding the belt and he's, and like, he's looking at <laughs> Seth and Seth's crying and Seth's saying, you deserve, you deserve this, man. It, yeah. You fucking deserve it. And I was like, wow, this is actually... They're giving him his flowers because of yeah. what he's doing he at COVID. Pandemic mania, yeah. yeah. And then he raises the title and the crowd's going crazy. The, cr the crowd was so behind Drew. They were and it, so And, and Americans love more. Drew, you know. Yeah, Americans yeah. love Drew more than we love Drew. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. I think they do appreciate him they, more they than, than we him. do here. Yeah. I think he's another one. That, I think he's... He, he's brilliant. He's, yeah, he's brilliant. He is. Yeah, yeah. He he is. is. Unbelievable. I had my reservations before. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
he's won me over completely. And then he goes to his wife, like you said, mm. if you could, if you don't Pre- mind giving, yeah, giving presents her yeah. with the world title. Um, then in the corner of his eye, and there was a brilliant piece of camera work. One hundred. That he, cameraman the camera was the paid actor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly, that he camera was, was crazy. The, the, the camera was brilliant, and spots CM Punk there. CM Punk was clapping him and everything. He he puts the title down. He crawls across the table and starts giving it the large to to CM Punk. And CM Punk's there, like you know, why, why are you making why this you about me? Saying yeah. about me, bro. Yeah, you won your title. You're yeah. fine. Clap, clap, clap. Like. And um, Drew's giving it the large and, you know, goes to give him, gives him the crop, uh, crop, the crotch chop. Crotch chop, sorry. Yeah. And um, as he turns around, as when Punk pulls his leg. But when all that was happening, I was literally saying to my cousin, this is taking too long. Why are we here doing this for too long? I look, started looking down from where I was sitting, like to see, you know, when he run into the arena, look at where's, where's Priest, where's Priest? Not that I was convinced Priest was going to have a, like an actual cash But it was taking long. It was yeah. taking yeah. long. Yeah, so it right. taking a right. bit too long. And then um, obviously that whole thing happened. Another great piece of camera work when Damon Priest's music hit and they caught CM Punk's Punk face said, just yeah. looking at Brilliant. him. And he, the grin just came across his face. <laughs> He um, was more gassed than Priest, I think. You literally, know yeah, literally. Yeah, I think he was. And when Priest ran in, like, it didn't look as good on TV because I've seen it back. Right. When Priest blasted him with the briefcase, right. if you saw the way the briefcase went flying, it nearly ended up in the front row. Right. Like, it was absolutely crazy. It looked spectacular, <laughs> honestly. Right, right. Like, but yeah, on TV, it just didn't, it didn't look as great as it looked in real life. Um, and, and then cashes obviously he cashes in. in and... Which is great because uh, I felt like the internet was running their mouth a bit about Priest, saying that he's like, Oh, he's, 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 he's not going to be a successful cash yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, he's not, not going to take not it off champion so caliber. Many, yeah. He's like he might as well cash it in on on or give it to Rhea to cash it in on. That's some, <laughs> some nonsense. They were saying that he might as well give Rhea to cash in another women's match and she has two titles. <laughs> people, people just saying nonsense, bro. And I, I know how great Damian Priest is. So to get him to cash in there and that choke slam was crazy, bro. Yeah. And um, his yeah. family were there as well. And his family he, was he, there. He grew. He grew up. Um, so obviously he grew up in Puerto Rico, but he. Did. he um, I think he moved to New York, I think, around the age of 10. Mm. So, like, to be that close to where you grew it's up. It's local for man, them, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that must be just the most beautiful feeling. At the biggest, like, I know that it was market, the biggest WrestleMania of all time. It was the biggest WrestleMania yeah. of all time. And mm. to have that moment. But I mean, the, the views are crazy. The, 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 the figures about the ratings of that WrestleMania is crazy. Be, be all people records. I know do not go out their way to watch wrestling. Watched it. But, like, obviously, I... I've got the network, so I would just yeah. Consume. People were paying pay per view money for it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's wrestling's back. Like but, it was getting a lot of hate on Twitter. Yeah, wrestling's yeah, back. It's yeah. back because when you when people start hating and shitting on it, it's because they know shit. Everybody's watching it again. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. And they want to be like, why is everybody watching? Because this? It, it's about that click, man. Yeah, I saw a few creators out there saying things about, oh, you're a grown man and you're watching wrestling. And I'm like. Go and watch okay. The Rock's entrance and then tell me, innit? <laughs> yeah, but they're it's, missing out. They don't, it's, they don't it's understand. It's to me. Like, it's because it's, it's ultimately, we're all consuming the same medium called TV. 100%. And these are the same like, people that probably watch um, The Bachelor. Or, <laughs> uh, these things are fake too. Sometimes it's worse than, it's more staged yeah. than wrestling. So, um, And that's not me knocking anyone that watches The Bachelor. Uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, that was, that, oh, and I loved how Judgment Day embraced Damien Priest. Yeah, oh, that, oh, that, that was lovely. That was lovely. That was heartfelt. Cool. Yeah. All right, next up, um, the Pride. Are they called the Pride? Not officially, no. So they, they were marketed street, as the Pride, though. Yeah, the I, think they, I think they trademarked, they've trademarked the name, but they haven't actually ever referred to them on TV as the Pride. So Street Profits, the Bobby Lashley and B-Fab could be called the Pride. Well, yeah. they kind of are called the Pride. Versus um, the Final Testament, Philadelphia Street Fight, Bubba, Bubba Ray Dudley was the guest referee. Homage to ECW, but not really a homage to ECW because yeah. they kind of, Held back a bit. They didn't. They should, don't you, Max? You were there. They should have went all well. They should have went all out straight. Should, Philadelphia. It wasn't extreme enough. Fight. No, no, it wasn't. One, two. You put in Bubba Ray Dudley uh, in there or Bully Ray. Something that you've been trying to sell to me for months. There's a serious feud where these guys don't like each other. Just kind of mm. joked that, it all up, sort yeah, of thing. It like it made it all a bit of a comedy segment. I, I felt the same. I felt. I felt going into it, they were building it quite well as well. Yeah. It was like costing each other for the tag teams wise costing each other for moments of mania Royal and, Rumble as well yeah and I, I liked how the whole factions were getting involved but I think adding him as the special guest referee I think it took away the seriousness mm. and it almost I think the people that obviously Bobby Lashley doesn't need another title run or whatever but I feel like it was a it would have been a great moment for Profits AOP and especially Karrion Cross because I think a lot of people had actually written him off I think they thought after he come back was that he had it I th- 
people would have said he's gone stale. But mm. now, I feel like that match could have really helped cement them. Um, I agree. The next year, yeah. yeah, they needed the win for me more than Bobby Lashley's yeah. team yeah. and stuff. Like, They're over as hell, man. Like you, they, they, they never... don't really need a win, do they? No, no. no. and and it doesn't surprise me now on Tuesday watching NXT. They they <laughs> turn up. <laughs> Mm. Final testament. Or what do NXT you guys now? think about that in terms of the people like main roster guys popping up on NXT, going down, coming up? And I, I don't have an issue with it largely because they've it's been done very well, sort yeah. of thing. They manage it pretty well. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a long term move or they might just be thinking, well, final testament, we're going to do a draft in four weeks' time, we're not going to have anything for you on TV, you know on SmackDown in the next four weeks. Just go down there and do some stuff in the meantime. Um, and then, yeah, once we do the draft, you'll be back sort of thing. I think when we saw Ivar go down there on Tuesday, final yeah. testament, and I think there was someone else. I can't remember. Natalia. Natalia yeah. yeah it, that's all it tells me. Draft is coming up soon. We're, we don't, we're not going to use you on TV in the next three weeks or so. Yeah. So just keep active down here. Uh, what did you guys think of the LA Knight AJ Styles match? Better than I thought. It Me would too. Be. I was surprised. Yeah. It's actually quite good. Yeah, it was. I thought it was after like I I like the build in a way, but then it started to get a bit ridiculous. It was like they've been arrested. They're now fighting at the media scrum. They're now fighting here. They're now fighting there. And I was going into it. I was like, I feel like it's almost going to start to become gimmicky yeah. in the sense of it wasn't really ever going to be a wrestling match. But I was watching. I was like, this is actually a very good match. Yeah, and Honestly, you know how big of an LA Knight fan I am, man. I think he's more, like he is just an example of how fighting someone like AJ Styles on the biggest stage in the mall to get the reaction. And he hung, and he hung, he hung Bro, in with him, man. Yeah. Yeah, like AJ Styles, it's no secret he will go down as one of the greatest ever. Yeah, of course. But to be WrestleMania 40 against AJ Styles, there's also that thing that in it. They've both been an impact. There's so many, they yeah. so many angles they could have gone with it. But I feel like it was a really enjoyable match. Uh, Logan Paul, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton for the United States Championship. Uh, what did you think of this, Max? This was this was good. Um, I feel like, yeah, Logan Paul's become synonymous with like big spots and stuff, which I don't feel we really got. Um, but apart from that, I think it was good. Obviously, we saw the, the friendship between Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. And of course, it's the snake Randy Orton that would try to kind of um, break that up, which he did in the match. Um, I did think... With Sami Zayn winning the night before, yeah, Kevin, Kevin Owens is going to win and they're going to have a little moment. Like Eddie Ben Watt. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I didn't think, like I said earlier, I didn't think Sami or Kevin Owens was going to win this ma their relative matches. So Kevin Owens didn't win. But um, yeah, I think it was a, a pretty good match, to be fair. Uh, Logan Paul got some hang time with that frog splash, man. That yeah, yeah. Amazing. That was, that was great. Very, very talented. And Speed showed up. Our, our, uh, Randy yeah. gave a RKO to Speed. He took, he took it that like a champ. He took it like a champ. That looked stiff, bro. Yeah. It like The way he landed, I was like, I think... We're not going to be seeing speed for a little while. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's amazing how Logan Paul, like how WWE are really embracing Paul's brand. Mm -hmm. Like Prime, Prime was a sponsor of WrestleMania. Even down to the turn, but the turn yeah, and, yeah. and the ring. Like, yeah. um, and allowing um, people that are signed to Paul's company, like, you know, KSI. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, KSI is a business partner, isn't he? But... But they're, speed they're, is side under under that whole tutelage, isn't it? They're they're, ta they're tapped in. Yeah, like they just really know what's Smart. going on. Like it's Nick good. Khan has seemed to get a real handle of this commercial stuff, and they are just finding a way to kind of put wrestling back in mainstream media. Yeah, like man. you don't have to be watching wrestling now. And then if you're a follower of Speed, it's just like you know all of a sudden he's tweeting a picture from an A and E bed. Like oh, I got, got RKO. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, like people know what RKO yeah, yeah, is. Like yeah, yeah. RKO is just synony synonymous with the internet. Randy Orton's out here tweeting, I hope the boy gets a speedy recovery. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is it. Like, we, it, it's not something that, it's just slowly their attempt to make it like pop 100%. culture again. Yeah. I feel it's working. I think it's come a long way. Like, under he would not be named, um, we've kind of, we was at a point where I feel like we were entering a social age, but WWE weren't really taking advantage of it. Yeah. Now, yeah. Completely, it's, the gloves are off. Yeah, yeah. But, it's unbelievable to see, and you you even see with the stuff with Logan Paul, he's it's that creativity. They're allowed to just go out yeah. and enjoy what they're doing, yeah. and I think that's just more testament. Look at like it, I know it's like the way everyone's saying now. It's like oh, we're in the Triple H. I I genuinely believe that now. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. 
Oh, yeah, we are. The I, mean, fa- the I, forgot, I forgot to mention Stephanie came out and said we're in the Triple H era. So. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Her in the ECW hat yeah. for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. Was like the women's speech was amazing. You, you got to saw that live as well, wasn't it? The point. I didn't, I didn't go to oh, didn't Hall go of Fame, fame but yeah. I, I watched it but I watched amazing. it twice. Amazing. I watched it twice. Probably um, the best speech in Hall of Fame history. Yeah, it's not being topped. No. Uh, Bailey defeated EO Sky for the WWE Women's Champion. I guess we all knew that was coming. It was Bailey's time. Give her flowers. Um, but what a match. Great match. It was a good match. I was very happy Bailey did win. I, I, I predicted her to win, but I was skeptical because she's such a giver. Yeah. And like she would want to do make these these girls go over and stuff like that and give them their shine. But it was definitely it was, yeah, her time. time. And um, yeah. yeah, it's well deserved. But big up EOS guy, that reversal she did. Did she be, what did she verse when she did the handstand? Or oh, did a rose plant? The she rose plant. Yeah. And she just oh kind of popped up. Yeah. Oh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I went crazy when I saw yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, do you know what? I think EO might be one of the most underrated people. In oh, no, she's world. incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's incredible, nature, bro. bro. She's incredible. All right. Uh, and let's go. Let's talk about the main event. Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. The streak versus the story. Mm. Um, You know, Back in what 2014 was it when the when Roman Reigns won Royal Rumble? 15 was that 2015? Yeah, in Philadelphia, mm. and the rock came down and raised Roman Roman Reigns' arm. He was booed out of the building. I'd say he was booed out of Philly, like it was, Boo- yeah, he was yeah, booed out of Philly. <laughs> we come to 2024, nearly 10 years later, and he's not only he's built up his profile, he's built up WWE's profile. He's, produced one of the best wrestling angles in a long time he's had one of the best streaks in wrestling for a long time one of the best title reigns he is the man right now and did you were you ha- were, I know and you've been it's giving Mex his due because me had a lot of arguments back in the day <laughs> you were lobbying for him when I wasn't really a big fan of his mm. um, but you were always lobbying for him and to see how he's changed everybody's mind mine included um were you ready for him to lose the belt? Did you think it was the right decision? He he had to lose the yeah. belt. He yeah. had to lose the belt. I think for me, it was confirmed he was going to lose after the documentary. I watched the documentary on the plane there and that was fantastic in itself. But it's just like, he's done so much. Um, he said, like, if I lose, I'm, I'm stepping away. Like, there's, there's nothing else I've got to do here. He spoke as well about, obviously, his his health with the leukaemia and that that battle, which... I don't think he needed to mention per se. Um, but yeah, for me, it was just like, yeah, he he's putting a, a bow on this chapter at least. And then we'll see him somewhere else down the road. And um, even the, the TikTok he done, um, I think yesterday or two days ago, yesterday we mourned today is day one yeah like he's it's like he's trailer, not he road. knows the game i was man. so gassed i was just like <laughs> cody can lose now like, I'm happy. <laughs> like he, my guy's back <laughs> he's coming back um no nah, but yeah it was it was just it needed to happen like all weekend we've heard new era new era triple h's era whatever the case is so this cemented it and just it was just a feel-good moment like they're f- thinking of feel-good moments there's, there's we'll get back to rain mm. there's a there's a few in WrestleMania, they always produce some really emotional, feel-good moments. You had the Savage and Elizabeth re- re- reunion. You had um, uh, you had the Benoit, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. When they met up with the belts and they hugged and Daniel Bryan. Daniel <laughs> Bryan, WrestleMania 30. Yeah. There's a lot more. Kofi Mania. Yeah. Um, this one, though, in particular, when Cody pinned Reigns' shoulders to the mat, even Reigns was smiling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could see everybody was happy for Cody. Do you know the best part of that was? Was when Seth Rollins was on the floor and, and they all picked him up my, together yeah. and Cody leant out. And the shot shoot, his hand, And yeah. you know what? And it, I was like, this is magic, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, because yeah. like, his first match back in WWE is against Seth Seth and now Rollins. he's the man who's helped him like achieve not only his dream, but his father's dream as well. And I thought, oh my God. Bro, the video package they did on the Monday... Still send shivers I'm down getting, my spine. I'm getting goosebumps right yeah, now, exactly. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up all my life, I always felt Ricky the Dragon Steve was probably the greatest baby face of all time. And now I feel Cody Rhodes is probably the best. I don't think there's a better baby face than Cody Rhodes. What in terms in WWE? Or? In in wrestling, I don't think he. I don't think he's matched on that. He's level. so personable. He is who he is. You see how he talks to people. He remembers journalists. I wrote a piece on him back in 2009. Mm. He remembers these people. Like he remembers, he's clued up 
even when he went AEW, he's, he was attuned to what people were writing about the industry. He knew where to go, who to talk to, who to embrace, what wrestlers to bring into the AEW. I, I think I've never seen somebody that, when I say deserve it, I'm not talking about in ring wise and worked hard and the grind and there's so many wrestlers as a that deserve person, it. Yeah. As a person, yeah. I think you saw how many people were emotional crying at ringside. Michael Cole was crying. crying. Samantha Owen couldn't even Samantha announce Owen him as the couldn't winner. announce the thing properly. She was crying and you know, you got Triple H emotional, you got Seth, Kevin Owens, like Randy. Brandy. Brandy's there. John like. Cena was <laughs> happy. John Cena stayed behind and was drinking and yeah. <laughs> like it was such a beautiful moment. Max, you were there live, man. How how Bro. was it for the crowd reaction when Cody finally got to end his story? People people were just so happy. And it's like one of them ones where like you, you kind of knew it was going to happen, but it was just like, we're, we're here now. And it's like a sigh of relief yeah. like when it when it happens. And they've done it right as well. Like the ending of that match was so chaotic, but it was brilliant. Like, and it's just knowing that, you know, I guess this product we're now watching is leading you in the right direction. There's a the right guy on top. Um, the right guy has has toppled this, this monster and his family. Um... Yeah, it just literally felt like this is this is correct. This it feels like home sort of thing. It was also lovely to see Brandy show up as well. Yeah, and, and she getting a pop as well. She's she got a mad pop. Yeah, oh, she deserved it, man. Wild, man. Uh, she was in the trenches with Cody, man. Like she deserved it. Man. She, the thing is, after watching his Cody's documentary as well, it was how much she refused to even. Even when he was in his darkest, but she was one of the people that was like, no, like, yeah, this Cody is says who. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. And bro, when he speaks about his daughter, and it's just like so many things come into play with his story it's not just a wrestling gimmick or a wrestling storyline right. there is stuff outside of the ring that comes into it so as someone who's grown up watching this i was just in awe of how well it was played out like down to the the shield music hitting wow okay, let's dive into that because i didn't even talk about that well let's talk about it. so the match is good <laughs> let's sorry i'm sorry I, I, I messed up with this and i went straight to the end and went straight to the finish so the match was good between cody and reigns it was going back and forth then um uh jimmy came, in, came yeah. out hit cody with a sweet chin well with a super kick and then jay uso music hit they meet up in the rap. The stage was the yeah, best they, thing they, the weekend yeah, from them they were yeah. so vexed yeah. they met up in the rap. <laughs> literally they both, Jay, 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 Jay Spear Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy yeah, they yeah. fell off and into a table off the ramp then Cody's getting the best of reigns Cody's hitting him with the crossroads Solo shows up just like he did at WrestleMania 39 spikes him you think thinking Cody's going to lose he kicks out then they do a spike spare combo Cody <laughs> kicks out I just, just to interrupt you just the consistency in Solo and Solo's character has taken a, a battering over the last few yeah. months. But a consistency in Solo's character that after he done that and didn't get the pin and Roman was getting all emotional about it, he oh, was still pissed off. Yeah. Kicking like, the come road. On, yeah. like, come on, like, yeah. get yeah. off, get, get yeah. off, finish this. Finish, finish, like, like, finish like, him. Oh, yeah. And even that, if they're telling stories the way they are, this is going to be what breaks the two of those yes, guys. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, absolutely. You're right. Because Solo's doing all the hard work and Reigns getting all the love for it. Yeah. Cena music hits because Cena and Solo had history. Cena wipes out Solo, takes him out a few shots, does the AA on Reigns, AA Solo on the announce table. Then the rock music hits. Get out of town, man. Rock comes out with the flares. <laughs> and Final what, boss in the flares. Is a what I level. love about what Rock always does is if you look back at the history of Rock as a heel, especially as a heel, he always mouths off to the ring. Yeah. I don't know what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, no, no, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to... He's always my friend. He did it Not again. My road. My road. <laughs> you better get out of my step, boy. Faces up with Cena. They got their history. Rock bottom Cena tells him to get the fuck out of my ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then the shield music hits. And I'm like, what is going on? The crowd's going crazy. For one second. People thought like, Moxley was there. Like, the whole oh, world Moxley was turning <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> what was so genius about this booking is The Rock is looking into the crowd like, where are you, where are yeah. you? But Reigns knows how the Shields think. So the Reigns was ready for Seth. Yeah. yeah. Comes in, Sh Sh Seth had the, the Shield gear, Superman punch, takes him out. Then um, th does the Reigns start battering, you get the belt out, mm -hmm. they start battering, whipping Cena, whipping... Um, yeah. Cody. Cody. Whipping, whipping, whipping. And then you hear the dong. 
The, mu- the lights go out. That sent the arena crazy into went, a Everyone went crazy. I thought it was going to be Austin. But I was watching at yeah. home and... I was a bit gutted it wasn't Austin, but I don't mind it was Undertaker either. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It kind of Undertaker's the locker room leader. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. Shows up, choke slams the rock, takes the rock out of it, and it's just between... It just, it, was just, it just booked well. It's like what the Sting Triple H match should have been. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, You yeah. can see that's what they wanted to do. It didn't get the same impact. It was, it was fun, mm. but this was... It. That ending might be one of I think the most well shot, yeah, well written, well booked. I mean, even endings. Reigns picking up the chair to, to, no, to that, hit that's Seth. what I'm talking about. Yeah, to hit it Seth. was. We are now 15 years on from when they started. Like, pro, like, what what year was it that the Shield debuted? Oh, like uh, 2014. 14. I think so 2014, yeah. yeah so they were. Years. So he is now 15 years on from probably the hardest thing anyone's ever gonna have to go through like he was essentially making the nfl yeah doing this he's come to the wwe gets his world title moment he's now the world champion the one thing that just kept, you can tell like there's that darkness inside reigns like everyone's like there's got to be a reason behind this if you ever want now you know why because it's, it's there yeah yeah and it's i was like turn. that that that, ca- that camera that's yeah? crazy bro whatever blank check give him whatever he wants <laughs> give him whatever and then he hit seth with the chair just like how seth hit him when he turned on him but he took his eyes off the ball of Cody because if he if he just focused on Cody he would have won. But and Cody kicked him in, hit him with the three crossroads, and he ended his story. That I mean, it was brilliant. The third crossroads yeah. as Absolutely well was brilliant. sold yeah, unbelievably yeah, by yeah. both of them. The way in which he's like shaking and yeah. the crowds, like, I was like, bro, I'm just a bit conscious of time, so I'm gonna rattle through some things. So that was the end of Mania. Quickly, yeah, let's go to you first. What would you rank Mania out of five? Five. Oh, I'll give it like a 4.5. Same. I'm, I'm going to give it a 4.5. I, I, I don't know if I can give it a 5. That, but at if least it was four, just on I'm, that I'm going to say 4. I'm going to say 4. Okay, I, I, I actually, you know, I think night, I think a couple of the matches on night one, if they were better, I think a lot more people would be saying it's a 5. I agree. Five. I think J- I agree. Jay and Jimmy, yeah. that needed to when, be better. Yeah, that should have been. Just because of the amount of the stuff they had to work with yeah. and just didn't. So I'm not going to talk about Raw too much, but obviously The Rock... Cody came out, Shibre showed him the, the 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 promo package that the, the the promo team which surprised Cody. Cody didn't know that was happening. He got emotional, the crowd's crying. The TV screen coming out like you're at school. Like yeah. that. <laughs> That's real school that in the classic. 90s. Like. <laughs> uh, Cody is uh, presented as a new world champion and Cody does a promo. The Rock comes out. The Rock was at Rock K that cool me on the phone. Ace and I was on the phone with each other while it was happening live and we were crying. Uh, Rock was brilliant in this promo, saying stuff like, you know, um, you know, you know, you're proud of your dad, is proud of you, smiling down like you're proud of you. You know, your dad and my dad used to run run the tour, run the road together. I don't know if my dad would be proud of me for what I did to you, but um I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't brilliant, care. bro. <laughs> I said I don't care. Now, Metzlad's got a theory about what Rock gave Cody uh, at the end at the, in his hand and said that he broke his heart. Before Mex and I, well, I'll, I'll ask about Mex to give the theory because it's the same theory that I have. But what's your theory? So remember, I said earlier I've got two. There was a thing that I. So I think it was one of Roman's beads. Okay, that's what we. That's okay. what we said. Yeah. yeah, that's what we said. Secondly, do you remember? when the new WWE Championship was brought in by The Rock. Yeah. After he beat And Cody Cena. cut the promo. Cody was the one who said, can I hold your belt? Mm. Yeah. And the way that has come full circle. That's crazy. Yeah. Bro, yeah. when I saw that, I was yeah. like, now, the oh. writing's mad. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, the writing's mad. I don't know how they're remembering <laughs> all this stuff because like, they do content so it's every the people week. people involved. The people yeah. involved are remembering it. Yeah. Cody and stuff. Yeah, like, it's, it's yeah you're right. Them, it's them. It? Yeah, it's especially Cody. Yeah. He would remember all that stuff. Mm. All right. So, yeah. Um, Going forward now, I guess I don't know. How, I don't think I have much questions to ask about Raw. Raw was good. Obviously, we know that Jay Uso has got a title shot against Damian yeah. Priest. Yeah, um, I liked Dragonov debuting. I, I like Dragonov debut because yeah, yeah. I I think he's a vet. I think he to begin with. I wasn't really sure whether he could make it work on the main roster. Yeah. But the way in which they've made the tweets, he's giving coming out in a suit. The stuff I think the stuff with Tony D was unbelievable. Yeah. I think that was some really good stuff there. But I think that really cemented him as a character. And now him coming up, I feel like he could go far on the main he, roster. He beat Nakamura. Yeah. The NXT champion, women's champion was Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez. She debuted. She looked really impressive. I mean, yeah. she was she's always great in NXT anyway. Yeah. But she looked really impressive in the debut. And Jay Cargill got a first ever Raw 
Yeah, Raw's match. Beach, so yeah, some you know they didn't really do any like surprise like there's no Tamatonga or Jacob Fatu, but they, you take time for that. You don't need to rush that. I think yeah. that's SummerSlam season. I think that's gonna be. It'll be good. I think Survivor Series. This or is you might have some surprises on SmackDown as well. I think Survivor Series is gonna be Roman and all of the people that he defeated against Rock and the New Bloodline. That's my prediction. We'll see. That's okay. a good shot. Uh. Um, okay, and, and before we sign off, let's talk about some of the current things in wrestling. Now, let's talk about AEW quickly. Um, <laughs> they uh, announced on Dynamite, well, on, they're going to showcase the footage of what happened between CM Punk and Jack Perry. Obviously, they're using it as part of their storyline with FTR. But I just don't know if this was a good look. We all saw the footage. Punk talked about what he did on the Ariel Hawani show. It's basically word by word verbatim what he what we saw him, you know, pushing Jack Perry, choking him out, and then screaming at Tony Khan. Did that look like that's something that would cause Tony Khan to fear for his life for what we saw there? I, I mean, not for me. If I'm Tony Khan, if, if, people, if someone, yeah, if we're all different people, yeah. so I'll definitely say if someone kind of pointed at me across from a table that was being held back by two people, no, I'm not personally feeling fear for my life. Yeah. But um, yeah. If that's how he felt, then <laughs> that's how he felt, isn't right. it? But there's talk that it's that like, AEW locker room are a bit upset about this being leaked and the morale is a bit low. Is this one of the first sh nails that could be put in a coffin for an AEW? I'm not. I'm not. By the way, I'm. I am no way advocating for that. I'm hoping that's not the case. Yeah. We need competition. I like. I actually genuinely like the product. Mm. You know, they can do so many things better, but I just feel a lot of this stuff is just petty and. They need to move on from this. I think Tony Khan's the problem. I, I think and so. I, I, I honestly, agree. I think you get someone else in that position to oversee the wrestling side of things. I think he's great in in terms of business, and I think he's really good. He, yeah. Like commercially, yeah, he can't be involved in this creative. Man. <sighs> I don't like that. I think that the person who loses the most out of all of this is Jack Perry. He now looks like an absolute weasel. Yeah, yeah. but like, I, I kind of felt that was the case yeah. anyway. But the <laughs> thing is, keep if real. you're gonna release footage, yeah. After what Punk had said, the only way of reason that you would release the footage if what Punk had said was incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> that, I, I agree. What, what, if, he's lying, if he's lying or, he, or, or if he's downplaying what yeah. he did. Like if he did something vicious and something worse. Yeah. But no. This guy is supposed to be. Exactly his, his, his dad owns Fulham, yeah? But he has never been to a proper football match no. if, he, if he's getting beat for all his life. And I'm going to be real. <laughs> for the, like, not condoning violence. Yeah. Not, and nobody's arguing that Punk shouldn't have been fired. We all yeah. know Punk. He, yeah, yeah. You did that, you deserve to be fired. Yeah, yeah. But have these men really seen real beef have kick they, off? Ever been to a hood? Cause, cause, yeah, because <laughs> this is it. that's what I'm saying. Because yeah, yeah, I'm like, this ain't really that bad. Like, it's bad. Like, you can break it up and you can fire the man. And, oh, you shouldn't have done that. But it's not that bad, bro. Like, it's really not that bad. Nothing deep. here you, makes you ain't sense. really seen real scraps if you think that's the worst thing ever. For them to try to out Punk from exactly what he said. This, like, this was a very accurate account yeah. sort of thing. Like, yeah. I, I thought for them to react like that, oh, they've caught him lying. He's yeah, lying. That's yeah. what like, I now we're going to shame him. Gonna, I thought it was going to... I feel... I actually... The reason I stayed... Like, the reason I stayed up to watch it was because I was like, I have to see this. And the reason I need to see it is because I think this could actually... It, if... A lot of people are predicting it's going very badly for Punk. Mm. And I think if it did, I feel like it could have really put a nail in the coffin of, and it would have overshadowed his return. Yeah. But I think now it's actually done the complete opposite of what they no, intended. No. Everyone's behind Punk now. Everyone's like... Including AEW fans that were screaming CM yeah, Punk yeah, in the yeah, arena. It's crazy, yeah. isn't it? Like, it's yeah, such the, a bad the, decision. The benefit has made CM Punk more over than ever. Yeah. With, with, the Bible, <laughs> with, their, with their actual company fans, which is crazy. Like, I think, like, if, if if we had to come to this point of showing this footage, then I would have said, like, Jack Perry should be the one to show it. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, look, like, he's a heel anyway. Like, oh, look, I was viciously attacked by this, this, this idiot, good. this crazy man. That'd look at what he done, blah, blah, blah. And you can put more heat on him. Yeah, yeah, milk it sort yeah. of thing. Like, look what he done to me. And, like, oh, he, uh, you know, come out with a, a brace around yeah. his neck. And he could be a chicken like, shit heel. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, and then he could do that. And that is a great idea. Man. That's, I, that is what they should have done. I don't understand why the Young Bucks are using this as fuel as, oh, but, this is why we lost in August. 
because we had to deal with this that doesn't backstage. Make sense. <laughs> if, really? Jack Perry did that, because you could do it. Now I don't remember what they were doing with the box as well, though. And I, I thought the EVP stuff, like when they had yeah, the white yeah, suits, they, they, they have been doing that. Good stuff. I, thought EVP, I thought Young Bucks were in some next bag, and yeah. this is going to be good. But yeah. it's, it's funny, the Young Bucks are using this as a reason as to why they lost in August. But CM Punk was involved in the scrap and went out and beat Samoa Joe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Minutes <laughs> afterwards. By the way, Samoa Joe in that video, brilliant. Unbelievable. Yeah. He, the you thing is, you, you saw, Joe was fearful for everyone else. He was like, this could go really yeah. left if I don't calm this down. Did you see Alistair Black there? He was back. He was back in punk. He was yeah. like, bro, he, was, he was on the scraps, bro. I'm going to be real. If I know scripts, writing, whatever. If we want to talk about outside of the ring, people that can throw, yeah. Malachi Black, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's, he's a kickboxer, He's like bro. a world champion. Yeah, he's a kickboxer. Kick he would have yeah. tied up all of these guys in pretzels. 100%. Like, it would have been 100%, easy for him. Like. 100%. It would have been long. Down. Yeah, yeah, literally. So, I just feel like it was a, another misstep from AW. Another misstep they did on... Will Ospreay's promo, bro. Man saying you're grinding on your wife and... You know, you know the like, thing about this, like, yeah. tacky, bro. You know the thing about this, yeah. Like, Triple H obviously fired the first shot. Mm. So, I guess you reply. Like, so I can't, I can't really say anything. If he just said the bit when he said, to say that I'm not on my grind when I take flights to UK and America back and forth and produce the best wrestling matches, great. I have no problem him saying that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was good. Yeah. So that's a good reply. I actually thought, and I thought that's all he did. So when I'm getting texts from Elijah, shout out to Elijah, saying, ah, oh, why is Will sending for AAA? I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. No, look, look at this bit. So oh, the only grind that you know is grinding on your yeah, wife. Yeah. I'm like, bro, what are you doing, it's, bro? It's one of them ones where, yeah, two things can be true at the same time. <laughs> yeah. What Triple H said was correct. Um, Osprey has come out and said, like, you know, I want to be closer to home. I don't want the crazy schedule. These lot offered me more and money. Which is fair. He's come out and said, and which is fair that as well. That doesn't make him a lazy wrestler. At all. No, not like, at all. Like, I think two things can be true. I think what I was more or less looking at it, like, at this point, Osprey is the top uh, baby face in, a in AEW. And he's come out and done this situation and said what he said or whatever. And like, this is just an isolated incident. The, the, the promo that followed afterwards against Danielson was great. But then I'm thinking about Cody, who is the top babyface in WWE and everything that he's done. This is the same guy, Cody, that went on Ariel Hawani's podcast after Punk and said, I don't agree with what Punk has said about these lot don't know business. He's now defending the opposition. Yeah. This is a baby face. Yeah. This is how babyface behaves. But it's like, I don't know. In that moment, I think Osprey could have, like you said, rep replied. Like he could have had to rebuttal, but in a that smarter bit, way. That like... was it. What you said earlier, I had no problem with that. Just leave yeah. it as that. You ain't even talking about no... And then you probably... Use you know what annoyed me? You know what annoyed yeah. me? Will, probably, Will was probably... Uh, you probably fed that line. Yeah. He was probably I... told to say that. Because I... these men are vexed at WWE. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I don't yeah. think Will would have said that off his own accord. It's, but they probably said, Will, make sure you say this bit. It's a bit weird with Osprey because I think so many people behind him and I think you kind of got this like British cockiness about yeah, him. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think it's really good. Yeah. But there's a fine line between being, co being cocky and being like, you looking at the, the things he was saying and it's just like, no, I, I, listen, really I get, getting over I get that Will's frustration because listen, if you look at his matches, there's no way you can say that man's yeah. lazy. Mm. His matches are crazy. Yeah. That man's working Hardly. Wembley was he's, his matches are crazy like, yeah. you can't say he's not a hard working person but so I get his frustration like if somebody's saying if you're busting your ass week in week out injuries all this stuff that you're doing because you're putting on these classics and he's putting on classics nearly every time yeah. and somebody's saying that you're lazy I get the frustration but I just feel that all you had to say was what he said about the travel bit and end it like the whole disrespecting Stephanie and that's a lot and that's something Stephanie is good friends with Renee Paquette yeah, and Renee, and Renee was there, right like, there exactly. And, and She's like not comfortable that. with that. That's man. not comfortable. Tony Schiavone didn't look good either. Tony Schiavone looked like he looked yeah, pissed. Like, this, bro. Is, yeah, this whole thing is, is just a mess. Like, yeah, it's it's just a again, AEW have recently taken up the moniker. AEW is where the best wrestle, which I would largely agree with. In, you know, especially yeah. after signing Osprey, yeah. Okada, you yeah, know, yeah. some of these names. You got Omega, you've got stars, Danielson. Yeah. This probably is where the best wrestle. So I beg you guys, just do that. Yeah. Just wrestle and stay out of all of this other bits and bobs. Like it's it's not for you. Like there's a guy in our wrestling group chat, and he's very much. He made a comment to me, and he was like, "Oh, there was only 45 minutes of wrestling during Raw," and I was like, "Raw didn't only needed 45 minutes of wrestling because the promos yeah. were that good." I was like, "I don't, I don't care." Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just like if you're saying something into the mic, and I'm not believing it. 
I'm not gonna sit there bro, and watch if, it. If I'm honest with you, I'm 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 an old wrestling man, bro. I like I like I like my wrestling to be on pay per views. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, like yeah. obviously have it yeah. on raw and stuff, but I'm, I want to know they stories. Want to build, I want yeah. To, yeah. yeah. Like, I keep saying it. Wrestling doesn't pay the bills. It, I don't know when people are going to start listening. Exactly. Listen. Like, some of the best wrestling in the world happens in New Japan. Yeah. And New Japan can't keep their stars because guess what? Wrestling doesn't pay the it bills. Does. It doesn't. There's not enough Unfor- money being made. So they're all coming over to the, to the US and to the West yeah. to earn to earn bigger checks. Like, let's stop this argument. Like, the only time I hear this argument is that maybe women aren't getting enough time on TV. Yeah. But like, to start saying, oh, a three-hour show only had 45 minutes. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Like, the WWE don't care. They're doing record shows. 17 straight sold-out yeah. shows. That's wild, Do, do you, you know? think 45 minutes of, of <laughs> wrestling is their problem? They don't yeah, care. They don't care, bro. They do not care. You shouldn't like, be surprised by it now, anyway. No. It's unbelievable, man. Dale, thank you for joining us, man. Thank Honestly, you so much. It's been an come, absolute pleasure, man. Come back man. again on the kick out. Yep. For anyone, Anytime you need me, bro. If anyone that enjoyed your views and your opinions, where can they follow you? What? Uh, they can find me at Delta Ethic as all my socials. Um, if you can't spell my surname, check on the skillet. Um, he'll be out, you'll be able to find me. Yeah, there. man. <laughs> and Max, you know, you, you know your family. We'll yeah. have you on here all the time. But <laughs> for your own channel, if people want to find out your own content, because you do so many, where can people find you? Uh, WrestleManiac UK on your X, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Come on. And uh, that's been the kick out. And uh, yeah, follow us at The Kick Out Podcast and all social media platforms.